Hello and welcome to the Precision Project. This week we're going to be talking about cleaning and I'm here with David Rooney of Tactical Rifles and he's going to kind of walk us through the steps for taking care of a precision built accurate rifle. How are you doing today David? Good Paul, how are you? Now is it not true that what the cleaning of a precision rifle will actually affect its accuracy positively or negatively? Oh absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and there's two types of cleaning we want to, we're going to want to conduct. There's uh, a break-in cleaning and then a standard maintenance. What's the difference between the two? Break-in is when a barrel is brand new um, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to smooth out the microscopic machining marks that are perpendicular to the axis of the bore. Uh, you do that a particular way, whereas regular cleaning is, is a different animal altogether. Okay. Uh, what would you recommend, for, let's say someone bought one of your guns and they're, they're in the middle of the break-in period. What, how many rounds uh, normally would it take between cleanings to actually get it broken in correctly? It depends on whether it's a factory gun or whether it's a custom gun. That's the, the main question between the two. The factory gun is not going to be built to the same tolerances. The barrel is not going to be as smooth, so it's going to take considerably more rounds with a factory rifle than it will with a hand-built custom gun. A hand-built custom gun, you're going to be firing far fewer rounds, and it's going to be a much more simple and faster procedure to do a break-in than it will with a factory gun. And that has to do greatly with the, the quality of the barrel? Absolutely. The hand lapping of the barrel makes a huge difference. In a factory rifle, you have to break in the barrel and the throat. With a hand-built custom gun, you're really only breaking in the throat because the barrel itself is already hand lapped. Okay. Could you take us through the steps that uh, you would go through to uh, actually clean this guy up good? Okay. If, if we're going to break it in, yeah. uh, the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make sure that we have a bore guide. There's multiple different bore guides that you can buy on the market. They all achieve the same purpose, and that is basically to support the cleaning rod so it doesn't whir one side of the throat unevenly, so it's very consistent throughout the bore. Um, then you're going to use a, uh, a jag. This is a Parker Hale style jag, which is very effective. It's got a large uh, cleaning area, which we prefer over the spike jags, because that way you have more contact with the bore itself. And then we have here a solid one-piece rod. This particular one is carbon fiber, which is by far away our preference. We do not like plastic coated rods because you get grit and dirt embedded within them. Then the next time you clean the rifle, you're basically putting that dirt through the barrel. You're just leaving it. stuff behind as you're cleaning them. Exactly. Okay. Uh, now, as for, for this particular rifle, uh, what steps would you st take to prep it for cleaning? Okay. Obviously, you make sure that the magazine is removed, you remove the bolt, make sure the weapon is unloaded, then the first thing that you're going to do is insert the bore guide. You put the bore guide in, like so, and then you make sure it's a nice snug tight fit there so there isn't any play in the bore guide. Then this rifle has an adjustable cheek piece and it's very important that you do drop that adjustable cheek piece because that way you're allowing the bore to not be worn unevenly by a rod that is angled downwards. So this okay. must be in the And could you position. just go ahead and take that out if you wanted to? Is, yeah. it, yeah. is that just, an option as well? You can for remove a... it completely, get it out of the way altogether. Yeah. Well, David, I appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk to us today. And we want to remember that if you spent money on a custom-built accurate rifle, you want to take care of it properly. Hello, today we're at Cook's Gun Shop in Biloxi, Mississippi, and with me is Mike Creel, the manager. Thanks, Mike, for inviting us into your shop Thank this you, morning. Paul. Now, we're going to take a little bit of time. We're going to talk about gun shop etiquette, and gun shop etiquette is actually twofold. It's how should you behave when you're looking at a gun that you're potentially going to buy, and what should you expect from the guy on the other side of the counter. Now, Mike, when a guy comes in and he wants to take a look at a gun, he says, oh, I want to take out, check out that new Ruger pistol. How would you like them to handle the gun on their side? When it's handed over to the customer, we want them to point the gun in a safe direction away from any other customer in the shop. And another thing, Paul, that I've seen so many times is a person immediately puts their finger on the trigger. We correct that right away, letting them know that a gun cannot fire unless your finger is on the trigger. And most people are very, you know, good with that. They make sense. Well, it's, it's a trigger, not a finger rest. Right. Now, whether you're in Biloxi, Mississippi, or Bangor, Maine, what should a customer expect from the clerk on the other side when he asks to see a firearm? What we do is when we pull a gun out of the counter off the rack, we're going to take like this handgun right here. We're going to drop the magazine. That way you can see that the magazine is empty. 
Then we're going to clear it a few times, lock back the slide, and then we're going to hand it to the customer. Thank you. Now, a lot of times people, I think they lose a little bit of focus. You and I are talking about this potential gun, and I'm holding it in my hand. If I rack this and start playing with the trigger, there may be a guy over there on the other side of the counter that's probably not going to appreciate me pointing a pistol at him. Not at all. It's not a so good, very need, comfortable feeling. Exactly. You need to be aware, not just you and I, but who else is around you. Now, Mike, we, we're, there's one other thing we want to talk about. We've had people, you said, come in to either have their guns appraised for resale or they want to have it fixed. If somebody wants to bring a gun through your front door, how would you like them to do that? We'd like for them to first let us have notice that they're going to be bringing a firearm in, but it's, that's, that's not policy, but what we want them to do is walk straight to the counter, hand the gun over to us, let us know what they need, and at that time we're going to open and clear it and make sure everything's good because we have had some loaded, unloaded guns walk through the door. Magically, ammunition ended up in the gun, and I, I swear I checked it. Yeah. Well, Mike, if the folks are coming by and they're on the Gulf Coast, how can they find you? We're at 4515 Potts Ferry Road in Biloxi, Mississippi. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Thank you, Paul. EOTech Holographic Weapon Sites. Accelerate your advantage. A dedication to personal defense and a style and precision like no other company in the industry. With seven engineering patents, Car Arms ensures unparalleled reliability in the concealed carry market. From 380, 9mm, 40 caliber, and 45 ACP, Car Arms lineup is ideal for personal protection and law enforcement applications. 100% American owned and made. Car Arms is a name you can trust. InSight, the foremost supplier of tactical lights and lasers for the U.S. Special Operations Forces. Ready, up! For an Insight dealer near you, go to InsightTechnology.com. Insight, built for battle.